Nikola Jovic joins the show to talk about his growth this season, learning how to navigate NBA officiating, and his upcoming matchup with Denver's Nikola Jokic. A great interview you won't want to miss on today's episode of Locked on Heat. You are Locked on Heat, your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to Locked On Heat, your daily podcast on the Miami Heat. I'm Wes Goldberg, editor at allyoucaneat.com, and joining me as always, longtime NBA reporter Dave Vermill. However you're tuning in on YouTube, Odyssey, or your favorite podcast app, thanks for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash NBA. Use the code all lowercase NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. We're recording this a couple of hours after we got done talking with Nikola Jovic after heat practice today. We're going to play the full interview for you here in a minute. But David, what was your takeaway from our conversation? You know, he had a lot to say. He's always really congenial and uh, he's a big fan of the podcast, as you'll see after you uh, play the video. But uh, overall, just in his talking about his role, and I think it's something that a lot of heat fans have debated is like, what's what exactly is Nikola Jovic going to be capable of doing? not just over the next 18 games, but over the next playoff run. Because he may be poised for a big playoff run, but by the same token, we're not entirely sure of what that role might be. And I don't think he is either. I think it's still very much a work in progress. He talks about his evolution. He's talked about his relationship with the coaching staff and being able to showcase what he's capable of, that they're fully aware of what he can do and what he brings to the table. And yet, his role is not clearly defined. He is not Bam Adebayo. He's not Jimmy Butler. And I think you could probably say that for almost any other player on the Heat roster, like Caleb mm-hmm. Martin's role is in flux. Tyler Hero's role might be in flux. And so Nikola Jovic, starting in just his second NBA season, definitely does not know whether or not he's going to continue getting playing time, whether it's off the bench as a starter or at all. And so I, I find that to be really interesting is that he just has to continue to focus. You know, it's it's an axiom that, NBA players repeat very frequently, you know, control what you can control. And maybe they use it in terms of transactions and whether or not there's a trade rumor or things of that sort. But with him, it's just, you know, he has to continue to focus on getting better, continuing to showcase his skills and prove his worth to the coaching staff and the franchise. And if that's the case, everything will kind of work itself out. Yeah, I I, I kind of asked him, like, the, did he feel firm in his footing in the, in the rotation? And to your point, he wouldn't give a definitive yes. And you understand it's because he was kind of yanked in and out of the rotation earlier in the season. And I do think that there's maybe something to be said about, okay, I went through that. I didn't play a lot as a rookie, you know, the back injury and all that kind of stuff, you know, impacted that obviously, but he's not going to take anything for granted. And he has now started 10 games in a row, which feels like a lot. And it almost feels like he's been starting longer uh, yeah. a little bit, but I, I do think that he's definitely been additive to what it is that the heat do. Um, you know, we did talk with him a little bit about the transition stuff that he's able to get to. And I, we get a lot of questions about whether or not he's going to be in the rotation going forward or in the playoffs and things like that. And, or if he's going to even continue to start, you know, if, if eventually that Eric Spolster just goes back to Caleb Martin and he closes with Caleb at the four, he doesn't close with Nico. Uh, and so you do wonder if push comes to shove in a playoff setting, what does Spolster do? But I go and, and I always thought that they would end up like this was an experiment and they're just going to get Nico reps. And I don't know that Eric Spolstra even knows what he's going to do in the playoffs just yet. I still think we have like another 18 games for him to even figure that out. And I think that's the way that he's looking at it. But every time you talk to Eric Spolstra, Bam Adebayo and Jimmy Butler, those three people specifically, they can't stop talking about how important Nikola Jovic is and how much they love what he does, especially when it comes to what he's able to do in transition, pushing the pace, getting those easy buckets. And for Miami's offense, that can so often get in the mud. Those like little relief points are so important to their offense. Even if it's just four to six a game, those can be those can mean the difference between a win, which can mean the difference between winning a series, right? And so yeah. I've been surprised by how much that, that that they're able to praise that specific thing. And you know, like, there's there's praise and then there's real praise, like in the NBA, like right, suppose sure. like, oh yeah, we love the work that he puts in behind the scenes and blah, 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 and just like spoism, spoism, spoism. But here he's talking about specific things that are additive value adds to the team that nobody else really adds to the team. Right. And I wonder if they look at that and say, we need that element and we're willing to live with 
the 20 year old mistakes that a 20 year old is going to make. Yeah, that's a fair point. And, and he does discuss exactly that skill set, what he what he's brought to the table in terms of transition and how it, it's become part of his repertoire and what they he, he coaches expect from him. So it, it's good to see that kind of self-awareness, um, the fact that he's able to continue to bring that and that that's his focus. But he also talks about trying to find a balance, uh, especially with a guy at his size who has to handle the ball as much as he does. And, you know, it's something that we've seen over the evolution of Bam Adebayo's career, too. He's like, how much can he become the playmaker versus the aggressive score, the guy looking for his shot? Can he push the ball up? Does he have to hang back and wait for Jimmy at all to kind of bring up the ball and then just kind of slowly work into their half-court offensive sets? That's something that Nico still is learning, but I think he's certainly improved and 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 has found a pretty comfortable balance, mm-hmm. at least on the outside. Maybe he coaches might want something different but I think Nico is, is certainly trending in the right direction. Uh, he also talked to, to us about like what changed from the beginning of the year to now, because he's obviously part of the rotation a lot more than he was sort of kind of yanked in and out of the rotation at the beginning of the year. And he talks about a lot of different things, but his mentality, and I found this part maybe the most interesting part of our interview, is his approach to practice. Mm. And he says he took it, he's taking it more seriously than he ever has. Mm. And I don't know that that meant that he was taking it not seriously before, but I think for right. any any young player in the NBA who hasn't been in an NBA practice before getting to the NBA, probably you have to figure out what is an NBA practice, and then what is a Miami Heat NBA practice, and how do I yeah. how do I act accordingly? And I, we've heard this about Eric Spolstra about plenty of different players in the past, but Eric Spolstra is going to make decisions a lot of times based on what he sees in practice, not necessarily what he sees on the court, right? And there's obviously on the court things that matter too. But he's going to give you an opportunity based on what he's seen in practice, right? And so, um, if if you if maybe that's what's different, people are wondering like why is he in the rotation now versus not at the beginning of the season when people were clamoring for him to be in the rotation? And maybe the difference right. was, hey, he had to earn it in practice before he got that opportunity on the court, and it feels like he's done that at least right now. Now, what that means for the future, nobody really knows, right. but he's at least earned the opportunity to show stuff on the court based on what he's done behind the scenes. That was sort yeah. of my takeaway from it. No, it's a really good point. Uh, you know, it's not just a matter of like, oh, everybody knows what I can do with my skills. I can just kind of fine tune them and uh, I'm going to get playing time as a result. No, no, these are dress rehearsals and you have to play these practices with the same kind of mental approach that you would bring to an actual in-game type situation. And that being the case, he had to continue to grow in that regard. He had to be able to make the transition as a 19-year-old, mostly unfamiliar with the NBA game and certainly with the kind of level of intensity that Miami Heat coaches bring to practice and expect of their players. So for him, it's been a learning process, but I, I'm glad, again, to see that kind of self-awareness and for him to be able to refocus his approach and say, you know what, I've got to do more in practice so that I can mm-hmm. continue to not just showcase my skills, but to earn, to work, to be able to put up the kind of energy that they're looking for out of a, of a consistent role player and certainly even a starter. So I, I I like his growth. I like the way he's been developing. I'm not so sure what that role is going to be like much like him, much like, you know, we've talked about before that role seems like it could be anywhere again, from a starter to completely out of the rotation. Yeah. But for now, I think these experiences are all positive. Like he's doing nothing but learning yeah. and he's going to continue to grow as a result. It's a good point. Like this, this guy's 20, take the long view. Even if he ends up being out of the rotation in the playoffs, it's right. It's about taking the long view here. Uh, Nikola Jovic over the last 10 games as a starter, 8.2 points per game on 49% shooting, almost 42% from three point range on 3.63 attempts, uh, three point attempts per game, uh, 4.4 rebounds, 2.3 assists. Um, and that's basically what it is. I still think that the production needs to get a little higher. Um, yes. especially like when he, when he gets hot from three point range, it just feels like the whole offense opens up, not just for him, but for Miami's offense in general. Uh, the rebounding needs to keep ticking up. He talked about that with us too, about how that's been a focus of his also. And I'd honestly like to he- see the heat put him in more playmaking positions too. I think almost two and a half assists per game. I think he can average more than that. Um, but yes. obviously with Terry Rozier and Bam Adebayo and Jimmy Butler, those opportunities aren't going to be there. But I'd like to see a little bit more of it. He's developing a nice chemistry with Jimmy Butler, especially on those entry passes going into Jimmy, into the post. Yeah. Some, it's kind of similar to what we saw with Kevin Love when he was healthy. Um, quick injury update before we get to the interview. Jimmy Butler did not practice on Tuesday with a non-COVID illness. He is expected to play 
against the Nuggets on Wednesday night. Tyler Hero and Kevin Love remain out for the Miami Heat. Coming up next, our conversation with Nikola Jovic. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home the winning trophy. It's also what keeps your car alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers to roof racks, exhaust kick kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, or maybe a combination of all three, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions do apply, and eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. I'm kind of... I feel like right now I feel really good to you know where I'm at, weight wise. Yeah. I, I feel like I look more like slim, you know? Microphone. A, a less fat, more muscle. Oh, my <laughs> bad. <laughs> How much weight have you put on since the start of the year? Uh, I would not say I put anything crazy. I, I'll say, I would say I'm. Uh, how, how would I say? I would say uh, I transferred more fat into a muscle. Yeah. yeah. Hell. Yeah. Well, you're we're here with Miami Heat starter Nikola Jovic. You've started a handful of games now in a row. Does it feel like um, you know it's been a crazy year for you? Does it feel like you finally kind of have your rhythm and your footing and kind of know what's expected of you night to night? I mean, f for now, yeah. You know, uh, I can I can say this summer. You know, now I got the opportunity where I'm uh, where I'm actually rolling now and uh, playing a little bit more than I did at the start. You know, I'm uh, I'm starting, which is. Which is, you know, unbelievable, and uh, just being around those guys in the first unit uh, feels amazing. Of course, the most important thing is uh, to win. Mm -hmm. You know, right now we have those three losses in three losses in a row, and uh, you never know things are going to change. You know, people are getting injured, and you know I might be starting, might be on the bench, might be out the rotation. So you never know, and uh, I feel like as long as I contribute to winning, I feel like I'll, I'll be all right. You, if you were in and out of the rotation to start the season. Like I said, you started a handful of games in a row. You just seem like to be in the rotation now. What what do you think has been the biggest change from the beginning of the year to now? Uh, I feel like I just, uh, you know, grew in a lot of aspects. Uh, just oh, I'm more focused on practices, which is the most important thing, and that's where I actually, like, uh, get my rhythm, and that's where coaches see that I can actually, you know, be in a game and lock in. And uh, you know, I need to stay solid in everything I do. I'm still a young player, you know. Referees are gonna pick on me, you know. Other guys are gonna, you know, call me up, you know, and everything. So uh, as long as I can, you know, uh, not act like a, you know, young, immature guy, and uh, as long as I can, you know, contribute where I can be consistently solid. Uh, that that's where I, I think that's where I grew the most because at the start you know I had a lot of ups and downs I would play great defensively one game the second one I'll be terrible and it was it was hard for sure for coaches and, and for me you know to get their rhythm and catch it and it was on me to you know somehow find a way and where I can be you know uh, consistent on nightly basis. One of the things you and you know we had talked about it during media day was off of the summer you were building a lot of confidence because you had all the more playing yeah. time but then to have a reduced role when you come here and kind of be up and down as you talked about how do you maintain your confidence throughout the course of the season i mean it, it was rough but it's 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 all about uh you know practice that's where i actually kept confidence you know i'm working a lot especially with dan bisakio you know one of the trainers who's uh, always with me and uh, before practices after practices on off days when we fly into town so i would always work i would always work out and uh that's where i you know kept myself you know honest and uh, i always love to be honest and uh I, I was you know even i at the start of the season was not sure if i can be consistent like i said on a nightly basis and then just practicing and locking in and working on everything uh, uh night and day out you know was that was the thing that actually helped me yeah i think one of the things you add to this group obviously is the the pace that you play with you play faster than anybody else on this on this team 
I'm curious, are coaches telling you, like, when you rip that rebound down and you just take off, are, you, are, there, are they telling you don't even look for your other teammates, don't wait for them to catch up, just, like, keep going and they'll follow you? Yeah, I mean, um, they want me to, you know, do those things because if you notice, we're kind of a little bit struggling in a transition, you know, and sure. we kind of need a little more relief points and that's what they expect me to do and kind of make it. But also at the same time, you know, playing with the guys like Jimmy, who when he scores like three, four times, you got to, you know, you got to stop, find him and, and that's the right play, you know, so uh coaches right now want me to do it but uh also it's also kind of a game plan you never know what how you gotta find a balance yeah find a balance always but yeah coaches actually want me to do that are you noticing yet anybody starting to close out on you have you been surprised by the fact that defenses don't close out that hard on you from three-point range they didn't at the start you know and uh the things that change and i can even hear it on the sideline when uh, i get the ball is you can hear other coaches yelling shooter so uh oh, that's good yeah so that's a change when that happens you know you're doing something good and yeah. uh that's the part i need to you know be great at it because you have all these guys who can be in a pain like uh jimmy and bam who's just living there and unbelievable there and you gotta double them so if someone doubles i'm gonna be open on a three and i need to make those shots you know it's it's not like you know i can consistently miss because we need someone to make those shots you talked about the refs before uh I'd obviously as a young player you kind of have to earn those calls yeah. but have you found that challenging because there have been times where even <laughs> just watching on tv where you, clearly you make contact yeah and you're just not getting the call um, how do you play through that and what do you talk, what do you tell the refs to say hey make the call the so the thing is you know I'm not. I'm really not trying to talk to the refs. Only when I. Well, you did recently. Yeah, I did. But like that, that's that, that's defensively, you know. Like right. offensively, I'm not trying to, you know, back for the calls. Of course, I'm gonna look at them or do something when I really think it's a it's a call. But like, the the thing that like I don't like is uh, defensively. You know, when someone's a superstar or averages 25 plus points, they're gonna get a call. Right. If they if they call it, referees gotta call it too. That's the thing that I really don't like. But offensively, it's it's hard, especially because you play with guys like Jimmy, who if he wants, he can get like 20 rebounds a game. And yeah. then you can just see him all these things and he'll just bump the guy in, make a little contact, and he'll probably get a foul. If I do the same thing, I'm not getting a foul. And that's, that's the truth. So, And uh, that's the thing I'm working on a lot, just finishing through contact because I'm not going to get a foul. What, what happened that that? suspension obviously the, the you know you got tossed to the ground by isaiah stewart yeah he's a physical player you were frustrated at that point in time right it was just you know he's physical and i was trying to you know be physical too and i didn't have a problem with it the thing that got me is yeah i was trying to you know get in front of him uh he kind of got me and then uh, and i fell that was a foul yeah i mean it was even if they didn't call it i'm, I'm right with it. the thing that got me is so we're going on offensive rebound i'm not i'm not really trying to foul him it's right Three, three of us in the pain, and he's the only one in the pain, and I tip the ball out, and they call a foul on that. Mm. That's and I'm like, you know, the guy just threw me on the ground. It's not like I tackled him, you know. I was just, and I was not even, like, holding him. Right. So that's when it got me. So, yeah, it was it was overreaction. I, I should have not done it, you know, and uh, it just it's just a dumb move for me. What did you say to the ref that got him set off? I just waved him, and I, I actually forgot, but that's how the rules are. And both things that I did, first when I tossed the ball, even though it was end of the first quarter, it's, that's the rule. So right. they, you got to attack me. And the second one also, when I, like, waved the hand at him, it, it's also, like, by the rule, it's a tech, so you got to attack me. Do you, uh, I know these are your first two ejections in the NBA. Have you ever been ejected previous no. to going to the NBA? So these no. are just your first two ejections of your life. Never got two techs, never got ejected. <laughs> so yeah, this my first first, first two brawl, first brawl that you've been involved in in New Orleans? Uh no, no. <laughs> in, in in Europe it's a little different, you know. The you I mean, are no, more normal there. I'm not say normal, but like people are physical and you know, you cannot just hold anyone everyone on the bench, you know, if there's a lot of people in the court and everything's happening, but if, I like the rules and it, I feel like it should be like that right. because you should not just let people run around and you know punching each other and stuff and <laughs> i feel like that's, that's a good rule though and uh uh i know it, it was also i mean my mistake and i should not step on the court and yeah did jimmy pay your fine uh i don't know i don't know you don't know who paid the fine i don't know i, don't, I don't, i'm not sure if anyone actually paid my fine <laughs> not right now i mean I'm, I'm not sure yet <laughs> that money's in escrow so we'll edit it out of the i know <laughs> i know i know actually uh, you did talk to me about it that someone will take it 
you know, someone will help me out with that. Somebody so, um, help you out. We don't know. Guardian I hope Angel. so. Yeah, hey, I hope so. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. It's demon time over at Prize Picks. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000. That's right, Prize Picks, America, America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports because it's just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than your stat projections on two to six stat players, uh, two to six players, and watch the winnings roll in. Uh, and Prize Picks makes everything so simple to play. You can make your picks and submit them in less than 60 seconds with quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types. That's what makes Price Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. And right now, if you go to pricepicks.com slash LockdownNBA and use the code LockdownNBA, you get a first deposit match of up to $100. That's pricepicks.com slash LockdownNBA. Use the code LockdownNBA and get a first deposit match of up to $100. Price Picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Today's episode is also brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on a 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good only through April 30th, so get started at robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees do apply, and now for some legal info. Claim as of the first quarter of 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. I want to look ahead to Wednesday night's game in Denver. You started uh, the last time you guys played in Denver. You obviously get them at home in Miami Wednesday night. Um, what are some things that you could take away from that last? It was a narrow loss. It was a close loss. Uh, obviously, you, get, you guys want to try to get the win this time. I mean, it was a hot start. They just started, you know, I think end of the first quarter, they shot like 70, almost 80% from three. Everything they shot, they made it. And we had a couple of mistakes, you know, especially in a transition by me. Uh, I had like two turnovers in transition. Also like some easy ones, you know, even like, I met through one where, you know, it was open, Terry, I think. I, I had one in a, actually inbounding the ball. So it was just kind of, I would say, I'm not sure, was it was it back-to-back? -back? No, it was not. Mm -mm. No. no, it was not. It was. For them, it was. For yeah, them, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for some reason, it felt kind of, you know, just weird going into the game. Well, that was your fourth game on the road during that, that long trip. You guys yeah, had. I would say we were not that focused. And... Matchup wise, and you know, guarding everyone, I, I think Bam gave Jokic some real problems. Mm -hmm. And even though you know he's probably the best player right now in the league, and he's gonna score anyways, uh, you know, we should just not let guys like Michael Porter, who's a great player, you know, right. but you know, scoring thirty plus points, you know, mm -hmm. should not be the case. Of course, you cannot hold him under like ten points because you know they're all great players, but right. you should not let him go for like thirty something. Right. And I think those are the things that actually killed us. Uh, defensive, we hold them, well, like, they score 104, right. mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. And uh, I feel like defensively, we're good. Just, you know, our all offense is n not in a great rhythm right now. You had some possessions against Jokic, and we saw, you know, you've been playing a lot of backup five minutes and stuff like that. What's your evolution in terms of you being able to fill in that role as the kind of sort of center? Yeah, I mean... You see that Kevin Love is out, yeah, and sure. uh, sometimes it's it's hard to oh, kind of when Bam is on the court, he's the guy who's gonna roll and be in the paint, and then I feel like just me being in the five, I bring something new. You know, I'm not saying that you know it's always the best thing. Right. It's just I'm saying different. just yeah, you just bring something different, and I'm gonna be a little bit outside. You know, we can space the floor. You know, five then gotta guard me. You know, outside and guys like Jimmy. Duncan and uh, Terry got a, a lot of open space in the paint to, you know, drive or pick and roll or whatever. You look so, forward yeah. to that matchup against Jokic? I mean, yeah, of course. You know, uh, that's, that's why you play this game. You know, to play against the best players in the world. What's your guys' relationship like? I know you guys had that dinner. What was that last year? Yeah, yeah. your rookie year. What do you guys, do you guys 
Are you part stay of the Baltic in touch boys? or anything? Like what's going on? I mean, yeah, yeah, we stay in touch, of course. Uh, there's not that many of us, you know, coming from Serbia, and right. uh, it feels like a little family. Not just him, but like guys like Bogdan, you know, now uh, Vasa Misic also on Hornets. And those guys, you know, kind of like a little family and, you know, you always stay in touch, you know, try to make sure everything's right. You always check how they play, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that stuff. You you know, if we're in the town, probably you know, trying to see each other and that's it. Do you get a lot of support from back home at all? Like, do you hear from people? Is there like, is there an excitement around the kind of small group that you guys have in the NBA? Oh, oh yeah, of course. Because I mean, you guys know people out there yeah. love basketball, and yeah. they they follow us for sure. I mean, guys like Jokic is for sure the main one. You have uh, uh, Bogdan, who's probably one of the most popular guys in our country. Is you know, he a star there. Uh, yeah, for sure, because he played at a uh, Partizan, and he was uh, the best player. He was uh, on national team every time he played. He was he was the guy, and people love. Just love to see him as a as a competitor, you know. Like you look at the Jimmy here, that's how they look at him there. Right. Was just thing. a competitor. Sorry, last thing. Uh, what what do you feel like you want to get accomplished over just you personally, individually, in, in your own game? We talked about growth a lot. Like, what's that next step for you over these last eighteen games going into the playoffs? Yeah, uh, if playoff wise, so the thing is that I know is people are gonna match up hunt. So. Yeah. Uh, right now, at this point, I feel like I'm really good at one-on-one -on -one defense. Even though I, I feel like if people study film now, you can see that I'm like pretty good, you know, mm -hmm. guarding. And people are less and less trying to call me up because you know there's not that big of a mismatch. And uh, as long as I can be good at that and also improve my team defense, and I just gotta help team rebound because we got some problems with rebounding. And if I'm at the four, I gotta be the guy who's gonna help them. Thanks Thank for the chat, guys. man. Thank Appreciate you, it, man. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks again to Nikola Jovic for joining the show, and thank you for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube and follow us on your podcast app. Everydayers, we will be back on Wednesday night following the Heat's game against the Nuggets with our reactions to the game and hopefully handing out some credit cookies. Plus, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel.